Hi there, just a quickie little video to be fair, um, just to show you these finished. Uh, we've, they're all painted up, they're all shiny, uh, got our little labels on, a few other bits and pieces. You can see on that one back there we've got finger trap warnings, um, re-spooled all the wire so it's nice and tidy. Uh, got bungs in, uh, tops anywhere, well you can see down in the bottom. I don't like open-ended box section, I don't like doing mitres, I don't like a lot really. Uh, so yeah, so they're all done, ready to be delivered on Monday. Um, we've got some anchor points down in the corner um, for some M8 Thunders, uh, they should be fine. Uh, we, I think I said last time, we doubled up on the, um, on the pulley setup, so that we've got 500 kilo lift. The PLCs in there are now all programmed exactly the same. They are programmed with the, um, to obviously recognize the stops. Uh, there was a stop mechanism on the motor itself, uh, which was hooked into um, here, and you can see the, the stop switches there. Not sufficient for what we want. It wasn't gonna be reliable this way up. If it was hanging the other way up, upside down, it would be fine. So. Um, in good old-fashioned traditional style, um, I've hacked in to those limit switches, taken them out, um, put the wires through into the uh, relays on the PLC. It just made life a little bit uh, easier, but they are all absolutely identical. Um, customers should be pleased. Uh, he did joke the other day that I sent him a video of it lifting me, and he said, well, if it can lift you because uh, I'm not exactly the smallest guy in the world. Um, so, yeah, all good. A little bit of fun. Uh, again, if you've got any comments, uh, if you, there are boards going on these, um, incidentally, where you see the holes, um, build boards. Uh, they're going to be um, inset, but that's up to the customer to fit those. Uh, the, the same as in the troughs here. Uh, he's going to put in some nylon so he can slide the boards off easily. We've got to make some little dollies so that they can slide them off the bottom of these. Once these are lowered, because they're, once they're lowered down to the ground, then he wants to be able to slide them onto some trolleys so that they can, uh, uh, well, move them out and start shipping them out to the customer. So there we go. Only a quickie. I uh, just thought it was worth, uh, worth putting, um, putting up uh, just to see the finished product, because you, you've seen it in various stages. I still haven't... Uh, um, I still haven't got around to setting up the camera to do tripod stuff and and to show you how we make things i will do it trust me i will do it um there's a fair bit of support for it it will be a you know a completely bare naked sort of situation um where all the mistakes will be caught live on camera and how we correct them and quite possibly how the hell i tell the guys off every now and again because of that but i'd never show to them i just say please don't do that again it's in the manual, page one, chapter one, and I give them all that kind of stuff. But hey, you know, we all make mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, it's just, as my old boss used to say, I make mistakes, boy, but I know how to cover them up, was his exact words. So there we go. If you're going to make a mistake, cover it up well, yeah? <laughs> that's, that's the way we look at it. But there you go. This are these panel lifts. And like I say, it's for building... Uh, solar inverter panels to go in properties and off-grid places. Uh, I could see why uh, they needed them. These panels are severely heavy and it's not even a two-guy lift. It's not even a three-guy lift. In fact, I don't actually know how the hell they get them off as it is at the moment, um, which is why the client requested uh, that. So, you know, he wanted half a ton lift. He's got half a ton lift. Um, it's probably got a little bit more than that, to be fair, but um, these things... These little uh, winches are actually quite good and they're pretty well suited for this job as well. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, all in all, lots of things I would do differently. Um, when I asked the guys to make the frame, uh, in my mind, with my experience, you see, this would have been all one piece all the way through here. Um, the same as the top would have been all one piece. Uh, they saw fit to make it in lots of little pieces. I don't know why. Um, it still, still baffles me a little bit, but they've done it. We've got around it. It's all square, it's all flat, and it all works. Um, it's just not the quickest way to do it. And, and this is something I would like to get into at a later date and just show you guys, um, those that are interested and those that don't know, 
um, because there's a lot of people out there that don't know um, how we can, you know, how you can do stuff a little bit quicker by thinking about the job before you start it. It's very easy to get a set of drawings and just go, boom, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'll cut all of this, then I'll make all of that. It doesn't always work out like that. Theory and practice are two very, very different things. Um, it should, I mean, unless you're working to extreme tolerances. So if you take a, a NASA situation, um, uh, the aircraft industry, aeronautical industry, um, they work with such tight tolerances that it's really, really hard to mess it up. You get a drawing, everything is cut very precisely, and it's fabricated very precisely. So um, that all fits. You don't often see aircraft engineers with big hammers, even though sometimes they've got big problems. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thought I'd show you. That's the uh, ready for delivery. Can't wait. And then I will see you on the next one. Oh, just another thing. Um, uh, my landlord asked me to make a decoiler. Um, no, I didn't know what he meant for a while. Uh, and then he described it. So on a Sunday today, I've knocked up a decoiler. There we go. So you just undo this handle here, take off that piece. And as you can see, it spins around um, so that they can just decoil the hose so they'll be able to hang it off of here. Um, on the front of their high ab or tractor or whatever they're going to use and then they can just hook up one end stake it in the ground and then drive off and it would just quite nicely decoil so that was a bit of fabrication I wish I'd um, shown you how I made that because that really was uh, back of the fag packet type engineering it was quite rough but it looks great um, never built one before Built similar things like it, vertical ones, but never built a horizontal one. Okay, there we go. It's bank holiday here in the UK, if you're not in the UK, uh, which means basically we get tomorrow off. It is a Sunday. It's ten past three. I've been in here since ten past six. So quite a long day for a Sunday and all by myself. Uh, oh, we know a song about that. So uh, anyway, take care. If you do like these videos, um, please um, punch the like button um, and subscribe if you want to see more, you know, rambling basically uh, and see products that we turn out you know we're a we're a quite a proud little company we do our very very best for our customers it, which means we don't always make the money we should uh, because I'm really really fussy about the way things look about the way things are built and about the operations of things so yeah like I said I wish I'd shown you the sheet metal for folding up all those boxes because we, we made all the boxes we didn't buy it in um, everything here that you can see basically we make you know we've obviously bought in the winches and the, and the rails and what have you but we try to make and fabricate or fabricable as much as we can so like I say have a great weekend enjoy the sunshine I think it's finishing in the UK or this part of the UK next Wednesday we could do with a little bit of rain to be fair um, yeah go have a barbecue go get yourself a beer that's exactly what I'm gonna do and I'll see you on the next one take care now cheers <laughs>